the occasion, the Canadian ceremony celebrating the coronation of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The Governor General's foot guards, the senior infantry unit of the Canadian militia, are chosen for the honor of trooping the color. years, Canada's citizen soldiers have played an important role in the defense of this country and its people. Organized in a vast network spreading out from the large centers, the militia covers Canada. Its roots reach down into the countless small communities that dot this land. Communities like Maydock, Ontario, for example. Headquarters of B Company of the Hastings and Prince Edward Regiment. I guess a stranger passing through our town on a Wednesday afternoon would sort of smile if he was told that Maydock was a military center. It's a quiet town and a friendly one, too. The sort of place where everyone knows everyone else and friendships date back a long, long time. The statistics read, Maydock, population 2100, agricultural center, a few small industries and some mining operations. But I guess the best way to describe our town is to say that most of us went to school together, grew up together, and married the girl who lived next door. No, I guess Maydock doesn't look very military. Still, appearances are deceiving. You can drop down to my garage most any day and hear as much talk about carbines as you will about carburetors. And if my Uncle Ted is about, you're likely to be in for a long lecture on the tradition and history of the Hasty Peas. It's got so everybody in town calls our garage company headquarters. You see, I'm O.C. of the local unit, and two others from the militia work here. One of our car salesmen, Tom Ash, is also our company sergeant major. Then there's Ken Broad, one of our platoon commanders. Ken is also a member of the volunteer firemen. They're out to wash down the streets today. Great fun for the kids. Matter of fact, it is for everybody. But that's the way life is in Maydock. Everybody has two or three jobs. Chief of Police Rankin, for instance, heads up the Boy Scouts and teaches our fellows boxing at the armories. Gabby Adams, one of B Company's new recruits this year, works out at Norm Whittock's flour mill. Lawrence Kernier comes in on parade nights from the farm where he works. Norm Jones, one of the older men in B Company, works in the smelter. He's a fine, mature soldier, a good influence on the younger lads. Tonight is parade night in Maydock. By 7 p.m., all over town, militiamen are getting into their uniforms and heading towards the armories. They come from the farms and the mines and the outlying areas from the shops and the mills and the stores. They continue a tradition of preparedness that was practiced by their fathers and their fathers before them. Tonight is parade night. And all across the country, from Vancouver Island to Newfoundland, these scenes are being repeated as the men of the militia assemble at their armories. This is the force that forms a part of every community across the land. Over 45,000 men leading civilian lives, but trained and ready for any national emergency. You know, it's one thing to put a uniform on a man, but then you have to make a good soldier of him. Our officers, NCOs, and the advisors from the regular army are kept pretty busy. 
The first thing we do is teach the men to work and act as a unit. And that means drill. People sometimes ask me why we put so much emphasis on drill. Well, we don't do it just to put on a show, even if we do attract quite a few spectators to our parades. You see, a fighting unit is very much like a football team. Its individual members must learn to act with speed, precision, and coordination. We teach them this in the drill hall. They will apply this discipline later in operations where it will count. Of course, perfection takes time. Militia training is of vital importance. In an emergency, many thousands of men would enlist. But there will not likely be time to outfit and train all of them. This is the importance of the militia organization all across Canada. It provides the national framework for a larger force and contains the components that are required in that force. This network has other uses too. In the event of floods, epidemics, national or local disasters of any kind, there are militia units within reach, ready to render assistance or maintain law and order. But the real job of the militia is to protect the vast stretches of this land the thousands of miles of mountain and plain, forest and valley that is Canada. Across the country, dozens of units, each with its own colorful history, are training today for this task. in an age of sudden attack, of large-scale lightning warfare. Yet in peacetime, we have neither the manpower nor the resources to maintain a large, full-time army. Hence the need for militia units, trading on a part-time basis in communities like Madoff. Our weekend exercises give us a chance to see the whole battalion in action. As much as possible, we try to simulate actual battle conditions and problems. This is a pretty basic maneuver, attacking a strong point under cover of a barrage and smoke screen. The main problem is to coordinate the attack with covering fire from machine guns. Not as easy as it sounds. We do a flanking movement and the troops who provided the fire now have to move quickly to help those who took the position. Attack's over, but first the umpires will have to figure out what our losses would have been if there had been real enemy up there. Later on, when we get our breath, we'll discuss the snags that came up during the attack, what went wrong with our timing, our communications, and so on. But right now, we're a tired bunch of men, and what with all that exercise and fresh air, there are big appetites to be satisfied. training progresses, we make periodic trips out to the regular army camp at Barryfield, where there's room to do some real soldiering.
Spencer, All right, get this equipment put away. Outside for inspection in 10 minutes. Let's look alive. Let's go. For the veterans of the last war, this brings back a lot of memories. It's as if somebody had suddenly peeled 15 years off our lives. And we were back in barracks in Aldershot, England. A lot younger and maybe getting ready for a weekend pass to London. But for most, it's their first taste of army life. Living in barracks, tossing for the upper or lower bunk, horsing around generally. <laughs> <laughs> Every training day is full of planned activities. On Sundays, the militiamen attend religious services for their own unit at the camp chapel. And then, because their stay is only for the weekend, they go directly to the rangers. Here they put to practical use the indoor training that they received on all their infantry weapons during the winter. From the simple mortar to the complex mechanism of the modern tank, the militiamen learn to handle them all. These modern tanks require many expert tradesmen, fitters, engine mechanics, gunners, and wireless operators. In the artillery, as in all the other corps, modern technology has made tremendous strides. The great-grandson of the old-time cannon that was used on the Plains of Abraham has become a complex, accurate weapon of long range. The gunner, of course, doesn't need to see his target. But his ranging methods require technical experts, signalers and surveyors. Mine detection and demolition are a part of the engineer's operations. They also train and use most of the types of tradesmen you find in big construction outfits. Whether the order is for a military road, a dock, a fuel reservoir or a bridge, they have the specialist to fill the bill. The Corps of Signals, for its part, handles all communications, whether they be wireless, radio, teletype, or telephone. Many a radio or TV technician got his start through militia training of this type. The service corps provides drivers, clerks, and stenographers, as well as many other tradesmen required to maintain the modern army. Some may satisfy a secret yearning to become a chef or learn how to check up on the wife's purchase of meat. Or try their hands at clerking. Each of the services needed to run a large city has its counterpart in the modern army. The electrical and mechanical engineers train armorers, gun mechanics, welders, fitters, radio and vehicle mechanics. So join the militia. Come clerks, medical and dental assistants, and they qualify.
decides to join up, he usually drops around to the garage to see me first. That's what Jimmy Mahar did, one of our new recruits. Ash and I had our eye on Jimmy for some time. Figured he'd make a good soldier. First, we take down the vital statistics. We'd all known Jimmy since he was in knee breeches, so that didn't take long. The medical examination, of course, is another matter, but he passed that with flying colors. And so, a few days later, I had the pleasure of swearing in another recruit. Mahar had joined the militia. A lot of good men have donned the uniform of the hasty peas in the past. Our mascot is a part of our regimental history. We're proud of our traditions. It's a quiet, sure pride in past achievements, in the work of those who passed here before us. And we like to share that pride with our recruits. It helps make better soldiers. The high point in the militia year of the Hastings and Prince Edward Regiment is summer camp at Niagara on the Lake, and they look forward to it. It gives them a chance to carry out a more extensive training program and participate in regimental maneuvers. It's a time of intensive activity and planning. Discipline, daily routine, training syllabus. These are words full of meaning at summer camp. has to cram a month's worth of training into a week. Some of this training will consist of brushing up or expanding their knowledge of things they have learned during the year. On other occasions, they'll be introduced to and taught the functioning of new equipment and weapons. the test of their efficiency as soldiers comes when the various companies assemble to participate in field maneuvers. The reputation of each company is at stake, and the competition is fierce. It sure is. Of course, B Company is the best in the regiment, but we've got to keep on our toes. C Company, they come from Port Hope, is just about perfect in camouflage, and that counts a lot, especially in defensive tactics. But you can't beat B Company when it comes to teamwork. That's where we've got the edge on the others.
And so the days go by at summer camp in a succession of maneuvers and exercises. It's a hard life during the day, but in the evenings there's time to relax, renew old friendships, and make new ones. Yes, it's a good life. A change from the garage, the smelter, the flour mill, the cares and worries of everyday life. A soldier's life is a lot of things. Pride in the unit, training well done, friendships that last. It's the weekend pass, the chance to meet new people, see new things with newly made friends. It's an opportunity to see places that you've read about, like Niagara Gorge and Whirlpool Rapids. This is the spot where our grandfather saw Blondin do his famous tightrope walk. The militia has a proud tradition and a proud history. At Dieppe, Sicily, and Normandy, the names of the militia regiments flashed across the headlines. And we shall see those names again if another war must be fought. Each militia man in the ranks today is there to defend something special for him. His family, his religion, his hometown, his way of life, his country. Canadian citizens, on guard across the nation.